Hello everyone and welcome to Lawrence Plays Factorio Space Exploration with Crastorio 2 and let's have a look at what happened in the last stream. Do you remember from the previous videos that I, I got the uh, the telescopes up here all built up and, and sort of ready to go but I didn't have any of the coolants coming in I did, um, so they weren't actually running. Now that's thoroughly fixed, we've got the, uh, the coolant supplies flowing in here quite happily and so the telescopes are all running. And that means we've got the steady stream of, um, let's see, are these ones, these ones are infrared, I think? Yes, infrared, vis visible light, and ultraviolet um, uh, plates being made. So we take, bring in the frames from up here, exposing them and passing them on down. Down to here, where they go through these orrery things that are actually called astrometrics facilities. And those will take in a large number of these, um, of these exposed frames and then turn them into the actual data cards and also some junk as well. So you can see, see from here, if we look at this one, there's a, um, a pretty good chance, 98% chance we'll get some visible observation data out, a 1% chance of a junk data card, and a 12% chance for some scrap. Um, these numbers don't feel like they quite add up, but you know, I'm not going to worry about it too much because, uh, well, <laughs> who knows where all the, all, the, all the stuff is going. I don't think we really have conservation of matter in Factorio. Um, but that means we then need the various different outputs over here. So we've got we've got the one down here that's taking away the data cards. And then, because as you remember from before, we've got the general disposal system that just deals with absolutely everything. The other side of this splitter can deal quite happily with both the junk data cards and the scrap. So those will flow off down here. They go onto the disposal belt, which goes all the way up here. Through a little bit of spaghetti over here to get it over around here and to get the barrels onto it from the debarreling over here. And then those can flow out here and just disappear down the, down the belt of doom, off to, off to never be seen again. So that works really, really well. I, I like that. It's nice. It's nice and easy to get rid of all of the byproducts, and we don't have to worry too much about splitting out all of the individual by byproducts to send them off to different places. So that's nice. I like that. It's, it's nice and easy. Um, and then they get fed on down here, where we've got uh, the three types of the three, three types of, of data cards coming out here from the three types of uh, telescope. And then we feed all, all three of them into these machines, which are then producing the multispectral astrometric analysis data. And there's a mouthful. <laughs> so it's producing those in, uh, well, in sufficient quantities that we now got a backlog of those. We've, got a, we've also got a bit of a, a decent backlog of the, I can't tell, the blue ones, lots of the blue ones, a reasonable number of the yellow ones, and slightly fewer of the green ones. And so I was going, hang on a minute. I've got the same number of telescopes, I've got the same number of analysis machines. Why are these different? So I went in and I had a look, and there's a couple of reasons for this. The first one is that I have fewer inserters on the for going into this yellow, um, yellow and green uh, telescopes up here. So we're getting fewer of them coming through here because I didn't. I when I when I put this in, I thought, okay, the end ones aren't running. But actually, the blue one, the blue end one, does have both of its inserters being powered because, as you can see here, the um, the substation's power coverage area goes out far enough to get those, but not far enough to get the ones on the other side. So it's not quite enough. And I could shove in something extra over here to power them, but I'm not going to do that right now because it's not really much point. But it is, no, yeah. But it's notable that the green and the yellow have slightly fewer being fed through, and so green is there's fewer of, and yellow there's fewer of. It's the blues that we, or the, um, yes, yeah, the blue ones that have they've not caught up yet, but they're a lot closer to it. And then I thought, but hang on a minute, so why are the yellows and the greens different? So I looked into it a little bit further, and it turns out the recipes in here uh, are actually slightly different. So in the telescopes, they're all exactly the same. It's you have, you take in one blank observation frame, you produce one exposed observation frame, and that's the same for all three of them, uh, one to one, all the way across. And they, I think they, yes, the, oh no, the um, the infrared uses slightly less thermofluid, but who cares? You don't really notice that. It just goes into the churns through the system. But each of those, they're, they're one one input frame to one output frame. Great. But then, down here, this one is uh, 12 and a 98% chance of producing. This one is takes in 10 and has a 90% chance of producing. This one takes in 10 and has an 85% chance of producing. So that's why we're getting more of the blue ones out than the... Uh, the uh, sorry, why we getting seem to be getting more yellows than greens? Because it only takes 10 frames in to, to, uh, to do the analysis. And I ran the numbers on this, and I actually remember to do this before making the video for a change. So I can tell you now that if you run the numbers through, that means on average it takes 12.2 uh, or 12.24 um, input frames to make one uh, visible data card because because of the the uh, the 98% the, um, chance of getting one out at, at uh, 12 and then for the UV it takes 11.1 uh, frames and for the infrared it takes 11.7 
11.76 frames. And they also run at slightly different speeds as well, which isn't an issue yet because we're currently limited by the number of the frames that are coming in. But that explain goes to explain why there's fewer of the um, of the, the green cards available down here than there are of the other ones. And it seems to be not running out all of these I think all of these machines are running constantly but it's not building up as much of a buffer of those as the other ones so if I want this to run any faster then I'm going to need to put in more telescopes up here doing the uh, whichever ones it was the green ones I think um, are the ones we've got yeah more telescopes up here doing the doing the green exposures or maybe just turn on the power for this one and then that'll that'll be enough so that's interesting. I mean, I, I wasn't expecting the recipes to be that different. The funny thing is, they're all, from a, from a very, very simplistic point of view, they're all exactly the same. You put in, you put in a cool therm sorry, cold thermofluid and a frame and get out an exposed frame. Then you put in some exposed frames and a memory card and you get out, uh, and you get out a data card with the relevant data on it and probably some rubbish as well. Uh, but when you look more closely, the balance is slightly off. And so if I want this to run smoothly, I might need to go in and fiddle with that. Or I might just not bother and go, eh, it's close enough. The other thing that makes it slightly more complicated, of course, is this step that takes in one of each of the uh, ingredients, one of each of the other types, and then will spit out uh, three of the astrometric data. So it, it turns three cards into three cards. Factorio, uh, or Space Exploration rather, is quite good about conservation of data cards. Um, you always seem to get as many out as you put in, whether that's in a, um, w in a d different form, or as a, a blank one, or as a broken one, or as a junk one. They'll come out in various different forms, but you do seem to nearly always keep the same number of data cards throughout the system um, but anyway that's now massively backed up so we don't have to worry too much about the input there and I think that might be why this this one here is probably starting to gradually build up I'm pretty sure this is getting slightly has slightly more on it than it did when I looked at it before and so I think we are producing them faster than they're being used so, this means we can now go and have a look at the, uh, what are we making here? We are making the catalogues and see what sort of speed we're making these at uh, let's look over the last hour uh, catalogue Please just show me the catalogs. Here they are. So, yeah, okay, we got off to a slow start, but then we sort of picked up. There are a couple of dips here. I'm not sure what these were. These might have been power problems. Um, they seem to have been coincided with massive consumption of uh, rocket cargo rocket sections. Uh, maybe they haven't. No, they haven't coincided quite with that. There's just a couple of spikes in there. Uh, so, yes, we have these. We've, we've had this sort of build up and build up, and then it's, it's a bit wibbly across the top here, but generally we're producing them at about a rate of. 17 per minute on average so I think that's pretty good that's the sort of that's the sort of speed we're aiming for with the science so I think we're doing okay here we are making the um, we're making the the, um, the catalogs at about the right speed and then as you can see they're just then being shuttled off straight down this belt over here into the station over here where we've now made um, 500 540 of them which is is a start it's nowhere near a train load yet but then we're not ready to put that anywhere to, to take them anywhere yet because we haven't built up a science park to deal with these catalogs so at the moment we are just building up catalogs for the sake of it and then later on we'll we'll build up something that can do do stuff with those so yeah generally pretty happy with how this is working um, looking up here we can see that we are currently using all of the um, all of the frames that are produced by this machine, the ones that are being dumped onto the bottom side of the belt or the left side of the belt, depending on exactly how you look at it, and some of the ones that are coming out of this machine are the ones that are going onto the top side of the belt. So we are using them faster than half of the current production speed, um, but not but not an ex but but we're clearly able to keep up at the moment. Now I would estimate this is probably using about maybe a third of a belt. So as we start to do later sciences and put, need, need a lot more telescopes producing a lots and lots of different data uh, data cards, then this may this will probably increase and we, but and I imagine we'll probably get more we'll we'll get to more than one belt of them required, but we'll see how it goes. If I remember correctly from playing 0.5, some of the later um, science types require these these uh, data cards the multi-spectral data uh, la later on and so we're going to need probably need to have more of the potentially have more of these machines although at the moment they're clearly more than capable of keeping up and therefore more of these telescopes of all of the telescopes to be feeding them so that's going to be something that will come in the future and is why I'm, I'm glad I've got a bit of future proofing here and enough space down here to bring these um, multi-spectral data cards all the way down here to, to later scientists as and when they'll be required so that's talked about making the uh, making all of these data cards. Yes, that, and, and yes, I think that is getting slightly longer each time I look at it. 
one of the big things I needed to do to get that going was to build up this uh, coolant coolant area down here. So this is dealing with all of the thermofluid. We've got a train that brings it in, but I'll talk about that more in, in a little while. That dumps it down the pipe here and goes in, into a tank. Uh, so the thing about thermofluid is you get quite a lot of throughput of it, um, and sometimes you need to worry about different types of thermofluid being fed back into the system. So for example, let's let's have a look in here. What's it, what's it called? There we go. I, I searched for cool and we found we found all of them. So, for example, the cool thermofluid is made in a radiator. Yes, great. But also, it's produced by doing this uh, cryogenics data. It's produced by doing gravity wave data. It's produced by doing a number of the other datas. So that means if your coolant system only takes in the warm and then cools it down from there, it will jam when you start to get cool thermofluid being fed back, potentially. If we go back and look at cold thermofluid, now this one it turns out is not actually made by anything else. We don't need to worry about it here. It's only the cool that we we, we need. To have, we have this where we have this issue. So down here you'll see that I have on the um, on the input for the warm thermofluid, we've got an input here, and this is the this is the, the feedback from all of the, all the telescopes and computers and things that are using it up here. That feeds it back in, and we want that one to be pumped in all the time because we need to remove it from this pipe so that all of the systems can carry on working and pump their cold, sorry, pump their uh, used warm thermofluid back into the system. However, this one down here comes from the station, and we want that one to make sure there's always a reasonable amount of thermofluid in this tank, but it's not too full. So I've got this one set up to pump across when there's less than 30,000 in there. 30,000 is probably unnecessary. I could probably drop it down to 10,000, I guess. I don't know. It doesn't really matter a huge amount. As long as there's enough headroom in this tank for all of the thermofluid in the rest of the system to be pushed around and then to go back into it, you'll probably be absolutely fine. So that one is then getting pushed out of the tank. So because I'm using these really big tanks, one of the things I discovered is that um, if you've only got like 10,000 10, in a tank that stores 200,000, then the tank is only 5% full. And that means you only get these pipes only fill up to a level of 5, which means you don't get very much pressure in them pushing the, uh, the thermofluid along, along the, uh, the feeder pipe. So in order to get around that problem, I put a pump on the output here that is always just trying to keep this pipe absolutely full. Now you'll notice at the problem, uh, you'll notice at the moment that this tank has emptied completely, and therefore this pipe is also empty. But that's okay because it just means that all the thermofluid has been pushed down further through the system. Uh, so if we look in this tank down here, we've got the same sort of thing here, just in case. So for future proofing, just in case any uh, cool thermofluid needs to come back and be fed in through this pipe here, which to be fair should have another pump on the input of it somewhere, but there wasn't room for it here, and I just haven't. Uh, maybe I'll move it down here for a future version of this blueprint. So this one, again, is only pumping through when there's less than 40,000 in here. So we're trying to keep this one at 40,000. And then we're chilling it down again here um, in the in the uh, hypercoolers to make it down into the cold thermofluid. And that can then be passed through into this tank where we've got a buffer being stored here. It's got to about 500. And we've got... And this pipe around here is about half full. So we don't really have enough in the system over here. <clears throat> However, we've not produced enough to bring more over. So it's enough to keep the system running, but not enough to push everything through to fill all the buffers up. So it's okay, but we'd like to bring some more in for future proofing. I have also put in this one down here for doing for turning the uh, the cold the the, uh, the cold into super chilled, uh, which is the the one that's at minus two hundred and seventy three. This machine isn't running at the moment. I don't have it. I don't have an input plugged into it because I don't need any of the super chilled yet. So creating any of this would just be a waste. However, it does occur to me that when I do need some, having this pump here is going to cause problems, and I should probably and um, I should probably remove that and just let all of this pipe buffer itself up to whatever's in this tank so we can have it flow from this tank back into these chillers as, as and when required. However, I think I took it out for the time being because I don't want to have too much thermofluid buffering in these pipes. So again, I just want to keep pushing it down and down and down the system as much as I can in order to keep the uh, in order to keep it where it's needed. So as you can see, we've got this 60% full in the pipes. That's good enough for now. It'll keep everything running. The other thing that surprised me a bit, so when I made the blueprint, if we have a look at the, uh, the blueprint I made, which is this one, you can see that I've only I've only put in a few radiators, a few uh, hypercoolers here, another hypercooler here. I've also put in these rather large tanks here, and after a bit of thinking about it, I've decided that actually 
the this design is somewhat better because you need a lot of radiators in order to chill it down from being the warm to being the cool. Uh, it's, fair, it's quite a slow process and it doesn't do a huge amount each time. As you can see here, uh, we, it takes 10 seconds and it does 50, which isn't too bad, um, but it, 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 wasn't, it just wasn't enough for the rate we we're getting through it. So I put in a huge number of radiators across here and that does seem to be working. At some point in the future, we'll up, probably upgrade to Thermal Radiator 2 and then we won't need anything like as many of them. But at the moment, we haven't researched those, so we can't do that. You'll also notice that at the moment we're doing the recipe where you take in 50 thermofluid and you produce 49 cool thermofluid. So it's slightly lossy. Each time it goes through the system, you lose 2% of your thermofluid. So, eventually, so this is why the train will need to run back and forth, topping us up every so often, or eventually will run out. If we have another look in here, we take in the, the thermofluid. So we'll see that there's various recipes you can use here. So the, if we, once we get the, uh, the thermal radiator 2, it'll... it'll triple the amount of throughput we get. We're still going 50 to 49. If we do a bit more research... Yes, here we go. After we do a bit more research, we can get the efficient cooling, where you turn 500 into 499. So you, instead of losing 2%, you lose 0.2% each time it runs, which is a big improvement. And then eventually... Uh, oh no, or you, or you can, and you can also research the fast th uh, cooling, which... Is, as, as it says, is much, much quicker, but you lose a full 10% of it each time it runs. Um, it's actually only twice as quick, looking at the numbers here. Uh, so as you can see, this this does 50 uh, into, into 49 every 10 seconds. This one does 10 into 9 every 1 second. So it runs into 10 times as fast, but only do, but does a fifth of the amount of thermofluid. So it produces... Rough, it does rough, it processes roughly twice twice as much. I don't think that's worth it. I would rather, in order to save wasting quite so much thermofluid, I'd rather just put in twice as many radiators. I also believe, yeah, oh no, there is room for modules in here, so I could expend some speed, uh, some more power by putting in a lot more, uh, by putting in speed modules into these and make them run a bit quicker. But again, because you can't, because you can't use. Um, productivity modules in space there's less reason to use the speed modules here I find so I'm, I'm more of the camp of let's just put in more machines at least until the UPS starts to cry and the UPS is already starting to cry a bit so maybe maybe I should, shouldn't be saying things like that uh, so yeah, it's expanded out a bit. I may need to make this bigger when uh, th no, this sort of, this is keeping up with the uh, with the demands on the system at the moment. Uh, once we put in the Astro 2 as well, I'm probably going to need to make it bigger then. But that's fine. We've got plenty of room for expansion off this way. I think the next thing to talk about, which I've hinted at a little bit, is the fact that we've now got the starts of a functional train system. So we've got, as you see here, we've got a train coming, train that does the thermofluid here. It's waiting to go over to thermofluid pickup, but there isn't enough thermofluid in thermofluid pickup for it to go and get some. So it's just, it's just idling here while it waits for that station to, to fill up. I haven't put in a train for this station yet, but I will at some point. And then up here, we've got the one. This one's in exactly the same position. It's waiting for there to be enough blank data cards in the pickup station for it to head off there. The interesting thing about these trains is that they all work. Off, the the space trains work off a battery system for their fueling. So instead of loading in, loading them up with coal or rocket fuel or whatever we might want to use for these, um, instead we're putting in these uh, battery packs and these gradually get turned into discharged power packs as they get used up. So on, down here, we've got the, that's why we've got two belts going past the train here. We've got this one that's loading, loading the train up with the, uh, with the brand new charged batteries. And then this, this one here that unloads the uh, discharged batteries from the train onto the other belt. And then as you've probably guessed, this then just drops onto the main disposal belt that goes off and disappears into the, in, into the distance, which is quite nice. It's another thing that can just be chucked on the disposal belt. We don't have an enormous amount of the batteries available yet. In theory, they're flowing through from a production system at the other end of the bus, uh, other end of the factory rather, and being stacked up on the on the on the belts here, ready to go into the trains. But we don't really have enough yet. So let's go and have a look at uh, look at what's going on over there. So over here. Uh, Tristan has set up a system down on Norvis, which we'll look at tomorrow, um, but it's producing the batteries. Those are being brought up by Rocket, like everything else. And he's producing them on Norvis, because I think that means he can then use the um, uh, productivity modules for, for making them, so they're a little bit cheaper. They then get passed around into here and into here, where they're then dumped out onto these belts over here, into these charging stations. Uh, so as you can see, he's at, presumably added onto here. No, he hasn't added batteries onto here. I'm surprised they're not getting passed through that. I mean, I suppose they'll probably get passed out onto here as fast as they come up. But really, this needs to have the batteries put on, onto here as well. So they don't get uh, just passed straight out into the air uh, and all the way down the system here. But what's happening here is the batteries are getting charged in these chargematrons. These are rather slow systems, but they, they will charge stuff up eventually. Um, then they're passing them back into here, which means they then rattle down... They presumably rattle all the way down here... 
um, and down and down and down. Ah, here we go. And then there's the, then from here, they're then being passed out by this loader, which puts them onto this belt that goes out out this way. Um, and once again, they should be on the um, on the on the list of things here that aren't aren't to be taken away. So they uh, so they won't be just so they won't risk getting passed down here. I wonder if any have been. Uh, this is very very full. <laughs> oh dear. We might need more um, more storage space in the, in, the, in the space system, although or maybe just more filtering stuff out. We haven't seen number of train parts up here. This is a bit ridiculous, and a lot and yeah, uh, lots and lots of lots of space train bits, lots of yeah, just lots and lots of stuff. Now all of this is stuff that should be in the generic storage system down here um, in order to be then available for building. Um, there's just rather a lot of it. Then here we've got the same sort of thing. Uh, let's sort this one as well, so we can see what's in here. A bit even more uh, train parts. That's, that's even more ridiculous. But none, yeah, it looks like none of the batteries have made it through into here. Although a little bit of scrap has, and some, and some blank observation frames for some reason. Those and, and some memory cards. Those should be taken out and have something sensible done with them. Also got lithium sulfur batteries here. That's um, mildly interesting. So yes, the system it does seem to be basically working. Oh, I see. He's put drains for all of these things down here at the bottom, so it'll pull out any excess ones and drop them onto these belts. So we've got, right, we've got the, um, here, if we look closely here, we can see that we've got the, uh, the discharged batteries and the broken batteries being put out onto the, onto the, dis on, onto the junk belt that's being taken away. And then we've got the charged ones coming out here and going onto a different belt, um, which goes down here. It's added to by, um, all of, by, but doing something funny with the um oh i see what he's doing here he's using the um these splitters to make sure all of the uh, charged batteries go onto the on onto the uh, uh, left what's technically the left hand side of the belt but looks like the right hand side from the way we're looking at it there's a couple of them there you see um so he is taking them out of all the one machines down here rather than yeah that's that's an odd way of doing it and not the way i've been designing around everywhere else but sure i guess um It'll work. So we've got, yes, yeah, this one is just, as you can see, dropping onto the dis junk disposal belt here, which goes into the, in, in over there. And then the other one, ah, right, he's, he's dropping the charged batteries, I see what he's doing here, onto the, the top side of this belt here, which means the charged batteries are being taken off into, off into the rest of the factory and are being put into the trains. So... This is this is the supply that I was showing you, which is rather currently rather slow, and it's rather slow because there's only two chargers in here, and these chargers take 30 seconds to charge each battery. So at the moment he's trying to work through all of the flat batteries that have been brought up from Norvis and gradually put them out into the system, and it's just taking a while. Once we've got through all of those, and we're sort of then we can sort of unleash all of the ones over here. So there's presumably we we could put in another um, underground belt over here, and that would let all of these flow out. But then potentially that would fill up the belts and not allow the new ones to come out of here. Um, some system of keeping this organised and topped up to the correct level is going to be required. Exactly how it's going to be done, I'm not sure yet. But we'll um, we'll leave that one for Tristan to worry about. I suspect. Yeah, we'll leave that one for him to worry about because he's in charge of the trains. But the flat ones, as, as we were talking about, they then get dropped onto this belt, the uh, general junk disposal belt. That gets fed all the way down to the bottom here, where we have a, a, a recycling system. So we've got machine. These these machines here are doing the the recipe that turns the broken batteries back into. Um, Yes, work, working but flat batteries by basically by putting new batteries into them and apparently using sulfuric acid with them. So that'll turn them in back into flat batteries. All the flat batteries are then passed down into these machines where they're charged up again. And there aren't enough of those, as you can tell by this rather long uh, backlog of flat batteries coming up all the way up here. So let's put in some more of those, like this. Bonk. Uh, so we can we can build that up easily enough to get to get to get the batteries being being uh, charged discharged a bit quicker. Um, however, there is another problem along here. So at the moment, the problem the problem that's causing the, this jam on on the belt here is because of the uh, the flat batteries coming through and blocking the thing up. However, I have also observed that these machines are not are now no longer capable of crushing down the barrels as fast as they're being produced. So these are coming through nice. At the moment, it's fine because it's, it's blocked up by the uh, by the flat batteries. But once we sort that problem out, these machines are not fast enough. Now the um, the machine, the recycling machines dealing with barrels are only there as a temporary thing because we don't want to be using barrels for that much longer. However, for the time being, the barrels are going to be being used and in quite relatively large quantities. So oh, there we go. The, uh, the belts have just been put in, so everything is now flowing through, and we're going to get suddenly get a lot of barrels of it made available. Um, but yes, we are going to be getting rid of this eventually. 
but that's an eventually thing and for now it's going to be a bit of a problem so I'm going to need to try and cram some more in here and I can't do the normal thing of just expanding out this way because I decided it'd be a good idea to put in some more um, data card process manufacturing over here and I put that double-sided because I don't know no no real good reason I just wanted to sort of compact make it a bit more compact and I didn't think I was going to need more of these and then and then I ha now I have so it's a bit that was a bit foolish <laughs> but I'll talk about that again in a moment so yes build this up a bit um, apparently we don't have enough pylons in here. Let's put another one in there. But we've pulled a load more of the data card, the uh, blank, the, the blank data cards. No, the uh, the dead batteries through, and that's now cleared this out. So as you can see now, the uh, barrels are the problem, and we've got, and that's probably backed up. Well, it had backed up all the way up to here, and we weren't getting anything out of these barrels. So <laughs> it's it's a couple of the, we've had a couple of problems here, and as you can see, they just they just stack back up and back up and back up the um, the system until you're, until they're causing all kinds of problems for absolutely everything else. So these these need to be made faster. This needs to be made faster. Then we might well be okay. We might we might be dealing with all of the all of the products that are coming through quickly enough. Uh, but then we'll we'll go in and have a look and see if there are see if there are more problems caused by anything else. <laughs> oh. So yes, as part of the expansion, I realised that we weren't making memory cards fast enough. As you can see, there's uh, 4,000 in the in the station over here. That's clearly not enough uh, because the train hasn't come to get them. Um, technically, at the moment, it's sort of enough because the um, the, the fact the uh, the Astro One system is running nicely. It has memory cards, uh, but we're going to need more of them for Energy uh, Energy One up here. We're going to need more of them for Astro One as it churns through all of the ones it's got. We're going to need lots more in the future. So this system over here needs to, be, needs to be improved. At the moment, the limiting factor appears to be the... I don't know what the limiting factor is. Oh, it's the rate we can get rid of the uh, contaminated cosmic water. Yes, I spotted this right at the end of the last episode. Uh, the last stream, but haven't haven't fixed it up yet. Um, and that was because it's all coming over here to be recycled. And then from here, I think I'd screwed up the uh, where, the, where the pumps are. Yes, it all flows down here, down here, down here, down here. Um, yes, so it doesn't end up going into these storage tanks. We've only got the pump pulling out of the storage tank, so I need to get rid of that pump so that the uh, the cleaning cleaning out of the um, cleaning out of the. Let's step back a little bit. The, uh, the the contaminated cosmic water comes in here and goes into this machine, which cleans it, which cleans it out and turns it into clean cosmic water and um, and contaminated biosludge, contaminated scrap. But it's not running at the moment because the clean cosmic water pipe here is full, and this pipe is full because it comes all the way down here and it's supposed to dump into this um, into this tank here. However, in order to keep the pressure up and keep all of the fluid flowing down this way, uh, some muppet, by which I mean myself, put in a pump here. Now this should probably be the other way around, and as soon as I do that, you'll see this this pipe will drain um, and take it out into these tanks, fill the tanks up from, and, and then everything will start running up here, and this will fairly quickly become hunky dory again. Uh, not immediately, but reasonably quickly. Uh, the problem is now that we're sucking all of the cosmic water out of this pipe, and so the we we're not feeding any of it down here to these machines in order to keep them running. So what I actually need is probably an additional pump down here, pulling it out of here and putting it into this pipe. Or, potentially, I just need to not have a pump here at all and just let it find its own level. Um, either way, I need to do something about this because it's causing problems. I can flip that back round, then we can push the pump cosmic water back in and these will start running again. But yeah, so this this needs to be fixed. We've got, we've got a big problem with the cosmic water here because I was trying to push the... I was trying to optimise the fluid flow a bit too much and it just didn't work. So we'll get rid of that for now. And if I put in a couple of pipes there, that'll work, I think, reasonably well. Maybe I need to put in a pump here that's pushing downwards. That, that would be, probably be quite a good way of doing, dealing with it. But anyway, yes, the cosmic water needs to get out of this system. Ah, and it also needs to be able to flow into the into the one up here. So this is also an input. So I need yes, I, I need to <laughs> I need to have this one at a floating level that's about whatever it wants to be, um, and not and, and not pump and not but basically not pump out of it, not pump into it. Just let it just let it be. So there we go. Put those pipes in there. Now we can sort of we can keep this at 30 percent. And as long as I get, yeah, and maybe put in, as I say, I put in a pump going downwards from here because everything downstream from here is is an output or is using it up. So that, 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 that should work. <clears throat> and now we can see up here, this machine has started running again. It runs reasonably quickly. gets through 200 of the cosmic water every single time it runs. It's able to dump it straight out into there. And now, well, we're still at basically full over here. Although it's doing slightly better. But we do have quite a lot of backlog in all of these polishing machines down here that we need to get rid of. So if we look over here, it's still full. But... And it actually is producing a bit more every single time it runs, but it's only producing five each time it runs. So I think, I think given that this machine seems to be running about the same machines as these, same speed as these ones are, we'll probably be, we'll probably be 
probably be okay. Um, but if not, then it's going to be fairly easy. It's going to be very, very easy, in fact, to put in a few more of these machines across here. And that's my expansion plans for the future. Uh, when we get to the point of needing more pipes to carry the, uh, the, the various cosmic water stages around, then I might need to change my mind. But for the time being, that should be absolutely fine. As you can, it looks like, yeah, it looks like we've got quite a lot more of the uh, substrates coming through now, and that should sort itself out. <laughs> While I'm talking about uh, making the memory cards over here, I should also mention that I moved the uh, the scrap output from being on this belt, which where there's no scrap being produced, as you can see, to being up here where the scrap is being produced. So now the, sc the scrap that's generated by these systems will go around here and be passed up into the rest of the disposal system. <laughs> I spotted that last time, I think, but um, only fixed it in the last stream. The next thing I want to talk about, apart from a, a quick pointer that I've, that I've added in additional machines along here, making the chemical gel and the thermofluid, because there wasn't enough being made, as, as we saw, uh, and I may need to bump those further, um, is to now come up here and talk about what Tristan's been doing with the, uh, with the uh, Energy 1. So, as you'll remember from earlier videos, we're currently producing Energy Science 1 over here in this sort of tangle of machines around here. So we've got we've got the whole meme coming in, we're breaking it out in, and we're making the, uh, the various the, the various data cards that go into Energy 1, um, then able to make that into make the actual science packs and then ship those ship those around to be made to do the science, should we say. Um, it's a bit slow, it's a bit crammed in, it's, it was basically dropped in there to allow us to get space trains researched to then allow us to move on to do all of the rest, to do, do all of it again, but properly. So, as part of doing it properly, Tristan has put in a, a starting point over here. This is a tangle, and um, goodness knows what's going on here. So, um, he's got, again, he's got the thermofluid cooling system here. He's copied that out of, out of my blueprint and, again, downgraded the tanks because there were silly amounts of the higher levels. That's great. Uh, he seems to actually be producing the super cool term of thermofluid and has filled his tank up with that, but, you know, that's fine. Uh, and he's now trying to, he's now letting it fill up all the rest of the tanks. Great. They, this this bit I'm okay with, uh, at least partly because, mostly because I designed it. Um, these stations here are a bit of a, uh, a confusion. So we've got a decider combinator here set to monitor the number of memory cards available, and when that goes low, request more. That's fine by setting the train limits on the station. Those are then being passed out. Oh, okay. This is this is his um, train fueling system. So, right. Yes, each of the trains has a loader here that's unloading it and dumping it down onto a belt that goes down this way and then goes into these warehouses. Okay. Uh, the warehouses then appear to pass all the way across here into these ones where we're doing the sorting and having the various different things coming out in various, in the sort of the sensible, reasonably sensible ways you'd expect. He's got a machine here slicing up the holmium um, uh, ingots into holmium plates. That's fine. Um, as long as that's fast enough to keep up, he's going to have an interesting time putting in a second machine if it won't. But I suppose you could put it in over here and then just have the belts run across, straight across and put the machines in on top. I think these have just been put in to remind him of what the recipes are, so we, we won't worry about those for now. And what machines are needed to make the uh, the various types of memory cards. So yes, along, along here he's got the various ingredients he's going to need to make all the different things um, in, in place. Uh, he said, so yes, he's bringing, so bringing in memory cards, that's probably going to be into this station, they're going to get dumped down into here, across, across that way, um, as, as, as appropriate. Um, and then he's doing the same with uh, mirrors, so the mirrors are going to be brought in from somewhere. I think we're going to, we're going to have a fair number of places, different places that need mirrors, because they're required up here for making the um, various different... Uh, one of the machines up here, I think it's the telescopes, needed for making telescopes, so I've got them being made on site up here, which is a bit messy. Uh, Mark has discovered they're also required for solar panels, but I'll talk about that later. And Tristan has found they're required for energy science. So those are going to be made in a in, in a town of their own, and I don't know where we're going to put random towns for extra little bits and pieces. Maybe, maybe there'll be some space up here for them, or maybe we'll, we need to extend the uh, train system out anyway. So we'll put them in somewhere. We'll see. We don't, it doesn't really matter just yet. Um... And then also green circuits and copper are being brought in as well. He's also got stuff coming in potentially by delivery cannon. And um, all of this is going into into these warehouses here. And as, as I mentioned earlier, pass, then passed across into here. Where it should all get sorted out reasonably neatly. In much the same way as I've got happening up here for, for the bus for the mall. So it's going to be the same sort of basic design. Uh, he just hasn't... Oh no, he has, he, has, he has got it all set up. So that's quite a, nice, a neat process. I'm going to do the same over in Astro once I have enough different things coming in that it's needed. But for now, this, seems, this is a nice way of transferring a, a smattering of random different things that are coming in into a nice mall-based system. Now, it is probably worth mentioning in his defense, he is he's fully aware and states that this station here is horrible and also temporary and is going to be replaced at some point in the future. Um, I'm quite horrified by the, all of the overlaps here. Let's pick up. Yeah, you see all of all of this section here is, is one single train 
lock. In fact, including this one. It's all just a, a bit of a mess. But yeah, temp temporary, he, he assures us. And we all know there's nothing more permanent than a temporary solution. So I'm sure it'll, I'm sure it'll be gone relatively soon. <laughs> oh dear. But once he's got all this set up and he's got the ingredients being brought in by Delivery Cannon, he's then going to be able to sort of start work, working on having all of the different machines, making the actual data cards, and then putting them together into science and, and you know, then getting getting all of this important, very important science shenaniganery done. And once he's done that, we can retire this system up here and, that, and, and everyone will breathe a sigh of relief. Uh, Tristan observes he's also made the five and seven length longer space pipes because I didn't. Uh, that's that's fair. I made um, I end up just making the nines and the the, fif the fifteens, the nines, and I think the threes because those seem to be the most popular uh, lengths. And then I've started using the fives and the sevens a bit more. So Tristan's put in some machines over here to make them. So um, thank you for that. Much appreciated. I don't know what's going on here. Why that's not why that's unplugged for the for making the nines? Maybe because he wanted to prioritise the other ones. Uh, that probably needs to be turned back on again because we have have apparently run out of nines. So yes, let's let, let's make sure that happens. Oh, and he's also done the sulfuric acid down in the recycling area down here. So this for a while took all of the um, took a massive quantities of the uh, sulfur production uh, that was coming or the sulfur shipping that was happening by delivery cannon up from Norvis um, and was just swallowing absolutely all of it in order to make sulfuric acid. But now these tanks are filled up, so pretty much this one's at 199,000 but never mind they're basically full we've got enough for trains coming to pick them up so that's great and we've also got some coming down here that and the reason he did it was because it was required for the uh, for the for the re, for the re, uh, reconditioning of the battery packs so that's been that's been fitted in there but it's been put on the train network as well because we're going to need it later for cryonite slushies and things like that and so we'll probably it's a good going to be useful to have that have that available he fixed a mistake i'd made where i didn't fill to this belt so the polished substrates were all flooding around here and um clogging everything up he sorted that one out thank you <laughs> much which which i think involved another belt just coming around here and filtering them around, filtering them out and pumping them back in again which we've now removed because the problem was fixed but thank you thank you for doing that for me <laughs> right okay so he's, he said that the charging of power packs up here by the bus is now obsolete and he's going to be getting rid of that as soon as possible uh, at some point he's just working through the um what's left in the presumably what's left in these machines because uh, there's oh, 71 in each of them because the loaders will load them as full as they possibly can as full as a player would be able to load them Whereas an inserter will only load them up to about three or four runs worth of stuff. So yeah, those are just going to stay there until they've run until they've used up all of their buffers. Then we can then we can start ch dumping all of the, uh, the the duff battery packs down here. The, sorry, the the discharge battery packs down here to get them charged up by the machines down here. Um, <clears throat> exactly how he's going to wire that up i guess is going to be with some very very long cables that tell that just tell the one that tell something to stop sending them up when we've got enough i don't know he's probably got a cunning plan for it and i'm sure it'll work very nicely but at the moment it, it's not implemented so i think that brings us to the end of uh, of what tristan's been doing up here in space and the end of all of the important stuff I've been doing. Um, this brief brief mention to to just to state that uh, Mark has also um, fixed he fixed the problem where we didn't have any low density structures up here, so that's now sorted. I think he basically did it by just coming along and extending the shopping list, which over here is over here. As you can see, he's now got a few more um, combinators on it because it's getting longer and longer and longer. But he's come in here and presumably increased. Yeah, we're now we're now requesting 8,000 low density structures at a time. So hopefully that means that by the time a rocket comes up, we will have in, we won't have used up all of the ones up here. Uh, we shall see, uh, but for now that seems to be, seems to be absolutely fine. Mark has also done one other thing up here in space, but I'm going to talk about that tomorrow because this video is also quite long and there's less stuff to talk about tomorrow, and because it hinges on some stuff that's happened down on Norvis. So today's split is going to be, or this week's split rather, is going to be Norbit in one video and everywhere else in another one because that just seems to be how things are falling out at the moment. Uh, so yes, thank you for watching. I hope you've enjoyed the video and we'll be coming back tomorrow for the for part two of it. Uh, please check out the channel sponsor, that's trefoil.be. Uh, they will host a Factorio or a Minecraft or a few other game servers for you. Uh, they're excellent value and if you use the code LawrencePlays on checkout, you can get even better value by getting 20% off. So yes, please check them out. There will be, as I said, another video tomorrow where we're going to have a look around at the rest of the stuff that's been going on in the in, in the in the save, and there'll uh, should be a um, and hopefully there'll be a video on Tuesday. Well, there'll definitely be a video on Tuesday if you're not a supporter because you're going to see the video that came out for supporters last week. Hopefully there'll be another one for supporters as well, and there should be a G GTA videos on Thursday as well. Uh, last week's for non-supporters and uh, this week's for, uh, for for supporters. If you want to become a channel supporter, check out the links in the description for uh, Ko-Fi or become a YouTube member or a Twitch subscriber if you prefer. Um, either will work. Oh, a train's just come through with some memory cards. So Tristan is currently hogging all the memory cards, but that's 
that's probably okay. Um, let's let's have a bit of an aside on that while I, uh, actually because since it's just happened, this is this is because we're not using LTN. This means that all of the memory cards will come to Tristan Station first because it's sim simply because it's nearer. Uh, the memory cards come from down here at blank data card pickup. They will come up, flow up here, and then it'll go, okay, this is the closest station. We'll go here first. Uh, that means we're going to have to absolutely fill this station up before any of them will be brought over to um, my blank data card drop over here. Uh, that is probably okay. That is currently, I was curious, currently not okay. We've, we've, we've used them all up. Blimey. Um, Yes, in fact, we have now run out of data blank data cards. So um, if Tristan could stop hogging them, that would be nice. Hopefully, though, this will now... Um, it will flood through into here. He'll have enough, and this will then deactivate his station. Let's have a quick look. Um, I know he's still got a train limit of one. That's a, that's that's a shame. How many how, how many is he, how many is he asking for? He's asking. He's got four point nine thousand coming in, and he's asking for ten thousand. So he's going to need at least one more train before he's um, before he's happy. That seems a little greedy. Maybe we'll deactivate his station in the next in the next run because uh, currently he doesn't actually need them, and I kind of do. So um, yeah, I'd rather I got them than he did for. The Time being, but we'll 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 see. Maybe maybe, maybe uh, um, at least once he gets once he gets this filled up, um, it, it'll he won't need them then for a while, and I can get all the rest of them. Um, in the meantime, I guess that just means I need to extend this further and get the uh, get these machines running much much more quickly and start making even more data cards. Now it looks like we still haven't got all of the machines running. This time it's due to a yeah due to a, still due to an excess of uh, of the uh, dirty dirty uh, water. Oh no, this one over here doesn't seem to have a, an output for some reason. That's very strange. I'll put that in there. Um, why these ones aren't working? You know, it's still too much, too much contaminated cosmic water. All right, it looks like we do need more processing for it. Then it's, we're not we're not uh, clearing out the backlog of that as quickly as I hope. So we need. Well, I'm going to need to fix that as well. <laughs> uh, lots to do, lots to do. But yeah, then that'll speed up the rate we're producing the memory, get the blank data cards at, and therefore hopefully we'll uh, we'll be producing them as fast as the factory uses them up. We also will have, at some point in the future, once we start actually doing science properly, we'll have a flood of blank data cards coming back from the, the science park, and those will be going back in here. So we won't just be making new ones, we'll also be recycling them as well. So that'll, that'll help quite a lot. But in the meantime, yes, uh, there's lot, be lots of videos during the week, including the GTA ones on Thursday, woodworking or miscellaneous factorio tutorial type ones on the Tuesdays and um, I'll be back on Monday and we'll be back on Monday with the stream as always and I'll be back uh, back on Wednesday with the next com stream so please make sure you're subscribed so you don't miss out on any of that and come along and watch all of the stuff on the channel <laughs> thank you very much for watching and I'll see you in the next one bye bye